Ladies and gentlemen, there's a recent story that came out and said, New York City is sinking because of the weight of the skyscrapers that are in the city. And I think it's way too many buildings and it's too many buildings out of greed. All right. And it just seems like it, they act like they got to keep slapping these buildings up and you really don't have to do that at all. And, you know, if you ever study the history of many of these cities, I believe most of the cities in America have been misdated. You know, we got a group of people that want you to believe that they came and put all these cities in. And, you know, if you go back and study the history in this country, these cities, many of them were already here before they even showed up. So they got them all misdated to make it look otherwise. And, and that's what I really, truly believe. So let's get into this story that recently came out. New York City is sinking under the weight of its buildings, geologists warn. And I'm not surprised. You know, nobody takes anything into consideration in this country. You know, it's all about making a buck. And they don't care what the consequences are. When you go to New York, it is just way too congested, not only with people, but with buildings. The buildings are built on top of each other when you go there, you know. And in fact, a lot of cities are like that, but New York is exceptionally bad. So new... Research warns the weight of New York City skyscrapers is actually causing the Big Apple to sink, whose more than 1 million buildings weigh nearly 1.7 trillion pounds. Okay, so New York City, ladies and gentlemen, they said, is getting closer and closer to the water at a rate of one to two milliliters a year, with some areas subsiding much faster. While that may not seem significant to untrained eyes, the gradual descent makes New York City extremely vulnerable to natural disasters, according to a leading researcher, Tom Parsons, of the United States Geological Survey. Lower Manhattan is at risk, and there is concern both for Brooklyn and Queens as well, according to the study, because these locations are old. They are. They're old. And I'm not surprised. A lot of these skyscrapers are up out of greed. And when you go to New York, there's a lot of um, office space everywhere. A lot of it is not even occupied either. So I'm not surprised, you know, and it is just one of those places where it could have potentially been a lot better, but it's just too congested there. That's just my opinion and anybody. I mean, I got relatives that live in New York and they've been there for since the great migration out of the South, my relatives have been in New York. So New York faces significant challenges from flood hazard. The threat of sea level rise is three to four times higher than the global average along with the Atlantic coast of North America. A deeply concentrated population, absolutely. There's no doubt about that. 8.4 million people face varying degrees of hazard from inundation of New York City. The city has already seen the harsh effects starting more than a decade ago. Yeah, I have noticed the flooding, definitely. And two recent hurricanes that caused casualties, heavy damage to New York City. In 2012, Hurricane Sandy, boy, I will never forget that one, forced seawater into the city, 
whereas heavy rainfall from Hurricane Ida in 2021 overwhelmed drainage systems because of the heavy runoff within the mostly paved city. So as awful as Sandy and Ida were, the more recent two hurricanes forcing people to abandon their cars on major roadways across the city. Parsons fear that the structural integrity of the city's many buildings could be at risk in the future. Yeah. You know, it makes me wonder where Ever you have a lot of buildings stacked on top of each other, if they're not having the same problems too. I just find it hard to believe that New York is the only location having this problem. I would imagine it would be in other places with the way they structure these buildings and they put them so close together and everything. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, they are, you know, they go into talking about the greenhouse gas that appears to be reducing the natural wind shear barrier along the U.S. East Coast, which will allow uh, frequent and more high intensity hurricane events in the coming decades. But I tell you what, I'm not surprised to hear this. You know, um, if you go and look at the history of New York, slavery was in New York. And remember, slaves were the first commodity sold on Wall Street. So, y'all, the history there is not good altogether. So are we surprised that something like this is happening in a city that took part in slavery and also lynchings? If you go look at the history of lynchings. There were lynchings also in New York. But y'all, please tell me what you think about this story. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.